Before we start this chapter, we shall have a look into a few keywords so that you pay more attention to them when they come across. These are the keywords. Please read them on your own and please pay more attention whenever they appear during the lecture. In this lecture, we will cover the first topic of this chapter, that is categories of test techniques. This topic has only one learning objective. Explain the characteristics, commonalities and differences between black box test techniques, white box test techniques and experience-based test techniques, and it is marked as K2. Before we start this chapter, Let's understand what is test technique. It is a procedure used to define test conditions, design test cases, and specify test data. That means test technique provides you a way using which you can define your test case, you can design your test case, and you can specify test data to support your test case. In this chapter, we will see different test techniques and how it helps us to design the test cases with practical examples. This is going to be a very interesting chapter for you. Before we go to different types of test techniques, we shall know what are the different factors based on which we select test techniques. And you just need to know the factors, how to use these techniques, we will see in different lecture. First factor is component or system complexity. Depending on how complex your system is, the type of test technique you will use varies. Second factor is regulatory standards, customer or contractual requirements. Depending on what we promise to the customer and what all standards are applicable to our product, we have to use test technique to satisfy it. Third factor is risk levels and types. Depending on what is the risk associated with your product and the type of risk, you select the test technique. For example, for banking system, we need a highly secure system to avoid hacking of the user account. Fourth factor is available documentation, tester knowledge, and skills. Selecting test technique also depends on which all supporting documents you have for your project and then how you use that information depends on your knowledge and skill. Fifth factor is available tool. Different organizations use different tools for testing and each tool has its own specific features. So you have to use your knowledge and skill to see which test technique you can use so that the available tool can be used efficiently. Sixth factor is time and budget. This is a very important factor. We have to select the test technique keeping in mind that using selected test technique we can complete the project in time and within the available budget. We also have to see that selected test technique is in line with the software development model we use. Let's summarize the factors we saw till now. Component or system complexity, regulatory standards, customer or contractual requirements, risk levels and types, available documentation, tester knowledge and skills, available tools, time and budget, software development lifecycle model, the types of defects expected in the component or system. In this lecture, we will see categories and characteristics of test techniques. Here, we will explain the characteristics, commonalities, and differences between black box test techniques, white box test techniques, and experience-based test techniques. First, we will see the test technique categories. Test techniques are categorized into three categories. Black box test, which is also known as behavioral or behavior-based technique. Next is white box testing 
which is also known as structural or structure-based technique. And third category is experience-based testing, where testing depends on the experience of the developer and tester. These categories are quite simple. Black box testing, white box testing, and experience-based testing. Let's first see the overview of black box testing. Black box testing is based on an analysis of the appropriate test basis and it concentrates on the inputs and outputs of the test object without reference to its internal structure. So, in black box testing, we analyze the requirement and then we see what are the output and what are the inputs. We don't care about the internal structure. Let's understand this. We saw this example during system testing explanation. Here, we had this requirement. If the speed of the motor is more than 150 km per hour and temperature value is greater than 120 degrees, then switch off the motor. In black box testing, we concentrate on what are the inputs. In this example, the inputs are speed more than 150 km per hour and temperature more than 120 degrees. Along with input, we also see what is the output. Here, the output is that motor will stop. So we have two inputs and one output. This is what we need for black box testing. Why it is called black box? Because to the tester, the internal structure of the code is not visible. Only input and output is visible. So this is why this technique is called black box test technique. Next is white box testing, which is opposite of black box testing. Let's see how. White box testing is based on an analysis of the architecture, detail design, internal structure, or the code of the test object, and it concentrates on the structure and processing within the test object. Here, you can see we care more about the internal structure of the code. Let's understand this by using same example, where working of motor depends on speed and temperature. Suppose to achieve this functionality, if this is the piece of code written, then for white box testing, divide them into small units, and then we see that the code is implemented correctly by performing white box test techniques on them. This technique is named white box because we can see the code here. Last one is experience-based technique. Experience-based technique are often combined with black box and white box test techniques. Here, the tester performs testing based on his experience and skill and not based on test basis. We will learn more about it in upcoming lectures. Now, let's see some common points and differences among these test techniques. First point is who you derive test condition for different test technique. Now, let's read this common point. Test conditions, test cases, and test data are derived from a test basis that may include. For black box testing, we can write test cases from software requirements, specifications, use cases, and user stories. And for white box testing, we need code, software architecture, detailed design, or any other source of information regarding the structure of the software. For experience-based testing, we don't need requirement or code. Here, we write test case based on knowledge and experience of testers, developers, users, and other stakeholders. So here, common point is that we write test condition and test care for all the test techniques, but their source is different. For black box, we have software requirement. For white box, we need code. And for experience-based testing, we use experience of the tester. Next point is related to coverage. For black box and white box testing, we can provide coverage, but not or experience because we don't use any document for performing experience-based testing. Last point is description of test techniques are provided in ISO IEC IEEE 
In this lecture, we are going to cover different type of black box test techniques. And these are the five different learning objectives of this topic. Apply equivalence partitioning to derive test cases from given requirements. Apply boundary value analysis to derive test cases from given requirements. Apply decision table testing to derive test cases from given requirements. Apply state transition testing to derive test cases from given requirements. Explain how to derive test cases from a use case. First four are marked as K3, so here you should know how to apply these techniques. And last one is marked as K2, so understanding of this topic is enough. Let's see the black box testing definition again. Black box testing is based on an analysis of the appropriate test basis and it concentrates on the inputs and outputs of the test object without reference to its internal structure. So in black box testing, we analyze the requirement and then we see what are the output and what are the inputs. We don't care about the internal structure. So there are five different types of black box testing. Equivalence partitioning, boundary value analysis, decision table testing, state transition testing, test cases from a use case. Since along with understanding this topic, we shall also know how to apply these techniques on requirement. These techniques will be explained by our experienced test manager, who has 15 years of experience in automation testing and 8 ISTQB certifications. If you get any doubts on any questions mentioned in this course or from outside, you can mention them to the question answer session of this course, and he will provide you the solution with explanation. You will hear me again once black box testing is done. See you. After black box testing, now we will see white box testing. We have three learning objectives under this topic. Explain statement coverage. Explain decision coverage. Explain the value of statement and decision coverage. And they all are marked as K2. Let's see the definition of white box testing. White box testing is based on an analysis of the architecture, detailed design, internal structure, or the code of the test object and it concentrates on the structure and processing within the test object. Here, you can see we care more about the internal structure of the code. White box testing, discussed in this syllabus, are of two types, statement coverage and decision coverage. Again, this topic will be explained by our experienced test manager. You will be able to hear me again with the experience-based testing. Until then, Bye-bye. Finally, this is the last topic of this chapter, experience-based test techniques. There are three learning objectives here. Explain error guessing. Explain exploratory testing. Explain checklist-based testing. They all are marked as K2. First, we will understand what is experience-based test technique. It is a technique in which the test cases are derived from the tester's skill and intuition and their experience with similar applications and technologies. That means in this type of testing, the success of testing entirely depends on the tester's skill and knowledge. In first chapter, we saw how test cases derived from the test basis. First, we analyze the test basis. Then we derive test condition, and finally we write test cases. But in experience based testing, we don't derive test cases from test bases. Here, the tester writes new test cases based on his experience and skill. Next point is these techniques can be helpful in identifying tests that were not easily identified by other more systematic techniques. Since the tester knows how the system works, and based on his experience, he may also know what types of defects were detected before, so this will help in writing effective test cases. Last point is not suitable to provide requirement coverage. Since the testing is not based on requirement, 
it is hard to provide coverage in experience-based test techniques. This was the overview of experience-based test technique. Experience-based test technique is of three types. First, error guessing. Second, exploratory testing. And third, checklist-based testing. We already covered this in last chapter. We will cover it here again from the point of view of testers' skill and knowledge. So remember these three names, error guessing, exploratory testing, and checklist-based testing. Now, let's see what is the approach of tester in error guessing technique. Here, tester, based on his experience and knowledge, thinks about possible errors, defects, and failures. He thinks how the application has worked in the past, what kind of errors tend to be made, failures that have occurred in other applications, and then lists them down to create the test design or test case. Here, you can clearly see that an error guessing technique, which is a type of experience-based technique, the test case is not written based on test bases. The quality of test case completely depends on the knowledge of the tester. Next experience-based test technique is exploratory testing. It is a dynamic testing. Let's understand why. In this testing, the tester, while test, thinks about the test case based on how the product works. To do this, he uses his experience and knowledge. Here, the test cases are not formal. Sometimes they are documented and sometimes not. And then, immediately, these test cases are executed. Here, tester thinks about different combinations and dynamically tests team. And the last one, checklist-based testing, where the checklist contains test conditions which need to be tested. Here, the tester tests the feature based on the checklist provided, while testing based on tester's knowledge. If he feels more points can be added to the checklist, then he adds more points to it and tests. This is how experience-based testing is combined with checklist-based testing. Now, we will go through the important points of error guessing. Point 1. Error guessing is a technique used to anticipate the occurrence of errors, defects, and failures based on the tester's knowledge. Point 2. While thinking, we ask these questions. How the application has worked in the past? What kind of errors tend to be made? failures that have occurred in other applications. Last point, error, defect, failure lists can be built based on experience, defect and failure data or from common knowledge about why software fails. Now, let's see important points of exploratory testing. First point, in exploratory testing, informal, not predefined tests are designed, executed, logged, and evaluated dynamically during test execution. Second point. This point is very, very important. Exploratory testing is most useful when there are few or inadequate specifications or significant time pressure on testing. Last point. Exploratory testing is sometimes conducted using session-based testing to structure the activity. Finally, important points of checklist-based testing. First point is in checklist-based testing, testers design, implement, and execute tests to cover test conditions found in a checklist. Second point is as part of analysis, testers create a new checklist or expand an existing checklist, but testers may also use an existing checklist without modification. Third point is in the absence of detailed test cases, Checklist-based testing can provide guidelines in a degree of consistency. In this lecture, we will cover equivalence partitioning test technique. Let's first understand what equivalence partitioning means. Equivalence partitioning divides data into partitions also known as equivalence classes, in such a way that all the members of a given partition are expected to be processed in the same way. Now let's understand this definition. Suppose you have a requirement. System shall accept only two digit numbers. That means the system will accept values from 10 to 99. But is it enough to test values? 
The answer is no. Here we have to apply equivalence partitioning technique. Let's see how. We can represent data like this, where number 10 and 99 can be kept at the boundary as these are the extreme values which system accepts. Now if you see, we have three partitions. Values less than 10, which are invalid. Values more than 99, which are also invalid. That means here we have three partitions. We can also say that we have three equivalence classes. Two invalid equivalence class and one valid equivalence partition. Now, let's summarize all the points which we covered. Valid values are values that should be accepted by the component or system. An equivalence partition containing valid values is called a valid equivalence partition. Invalid values are values that should be rejected by the component or system. An equivalence partition containing invalid values is called an invalid equivalence partition. Any partition may be divided into sub-partitions if required. What it means is, in the valid equivalence partition, we can have multiple partitions. We will cover it in upcoming lectures. Each value must belong to one and only one equivalence partition. And when invalid equivalence partitions are used in test cases, they should be tested individually. Here the question is, one of the fields on a form contains a text box which accepts numeric values in the range of 18 to 25. Identify the invalid equivalence class. Here we need to concentrate on two points. First, the valid range is from 18 to 25. And we need to find the invalid value from these options. Let's first draw the equivalence class diagram. As per the question, value in the range 18 and 25 is valid. Now let's look into the options. The first option is 21, and we can place 21 here, which is a valid value. The next option is 19, and we can place it here, which is also a valid value. Next option is 24, and we can place it here, which is also a valid value. So, 21, 19, and 24 are the valid value. Last option is 17, and we can place it here, and it is an invalid value. So, option 4, which is 17, is the correct answer. Here the question is, one of the fields on a form contains a text box which accepts alphanumeric values. Identify the valid equivalence class. Here we need to concentrate on two points. First, the field accepts alphanumeric values. Alphanumeric means both alphabets and numeric. We need to find the valid equivalence values from these options. Let's first draw the equivalence class diagram. As per the question, we can draw only two classes, one for alphabets and the other one for numeric. Now let's look into the first option, and we can put it here. Here, all the letters are capital and it only covers alphabets. Similarly, if we see option B, where B is capital and all other letters are in a small case. Now let's see option C, and we can place it like this. Now we can see that it covers both classes, and here B is capital, 
O O K is in small case, and zero and one is numeric. And in the last option, B and K is capital, and O O is in a small case. Now, if we look into all the options, they all are a valid range. But now we need to select the best answer here. If we see options C, it contains both combinations where we have capital alphabets, small alphabets, and numbers too. Therefore, option C is the answer. Through all the options are correct here. Here, the question is: In a system designed to work out the tax to be paid, an employee has four thousand euros of salary tax-free. The next fifteen hundred euros is taxed at ten percent. The next twenty-eight thousand euros after that is taxed at twenty-two percent. Any further amount is taxed at forty percent. To the nearest whole pound. Which of these groups of numbers fall into three different equivalence classes? And these are your options. Now let's first build the equivalence classes diagram. For these types of questions, it's important that we draw it. To draw the diagram, we need to refer to this data. Until four thousand, it's tax-free. So four thousand is our first value. Now next, fifteen hundred is taxed at ten percent. That means four thousand plus fifteen hundred, which is fifty-five hundred, is our next boundary. Between four thousand to fifty-five hundred, we need to pay ten percent tax. Next, twenty-eight thousand is taxed at twenty-two percent. That means. Fifty-five hundred plus twenty-eight thousand, which is thirty-three five hundred, is our next boundary. Between fifty-five hundred and thirty-three five hundred is taxed at twenty-two percent. Anything above this is under forty percent tax. With this equivalence, classes diagram is ready. Now, as per the question, we have to find the groups of numbers which fall into three different equivalence classes. Here we have four different equivalence classes. Now let's analyze the options one by one to get the correct answer. First option is four thousand, five thousand, fifty-five hundred. We can put them like this. Here, five thousand and fifty-five hundred are in the same class as both are in ten percent tax lab. So this is not the answer. Let's move to the next option. Thirty-two hundred and one, thirty-four thousand, thirty-six five hundred. We can put them like this. Here. Thirty-four thousand and thirty-six five hundred are in the same class, so this is not the correct answer. The next option is twenty-eight thousand, twenty-eight thousand and one, thirty-two thousand and one, and we can put them here. They are all in the same class, so definitely not the correct answer. Now it's obvious that the last option is the correct one, but let's see how. Four thousand comes here, forty-two hundred comes here, and fifty-six hundred comes here. They are all in the different classes. Four thousand is tax-free. Forty-two hundred is under ten percent tax lab, and fifty-six hundred is under twenty-two percent tax lab. It's clear that option D is the correct answer. Here the question is: 
A company has set up an employee wellness program and combined it with the premium for health insurance. The full standard premium for a health insurance policy is $400. The program has the following rules. Number one, employees who make a pledge on the honor system that they don't smoke or that they take a stop smoking class and have a BMI below 30 get 10% off their contribution toward the full standard insurance premium. Number two, employees who fill in a health risk assessment with more health details will be rewarded with a $25 reduction in premium. Number three, employees who participate in a yearly health control at the company. A receive a $50 reduction in their premium for having a BMI of 27.5 or less and a $25 reduction for having a BMI below 30. And B. If they are non-smokers, they receive an additional $50 reduction in their premium and those that have joined a stop smoking class receive a $25 reduction. Smokers pay an additional premium of $75. How many test cases are needed to achieve 100% test coverage of equivalence partitions of the input parameters when testing this specification by applying the equivalence partitioning test design technique and what will be the maximum and minimum resulting premium? These are your options. Let's first build the equivalence classes diagram. For these types of questions, it's important that we draw the equivalence classes diagram. To draw the diagram, we need to refer to this data. Standard insurance policy is of $400. The first condition is employee making pledge. Here we can make two conditions. Employee making pledge and employee not making pledge. If they don't make pledge, they will not get any discount. And if they make pledge, they will get 10% off. With this, the first condition is fulfilled. The second condition is employee filling health risk form. Here again, we will get two conditions. If employee don't fill health assessment form, they will not get any discount. If employee fill health assessment form, they will get $25 off. With this, the second condition is fulfilled. Now let's move to the third condition, which has two sub-conditions. As per condition 1. Here, if your BMI is less than 27.5, you will get $50. If your age is less than 30, you will get $25. And if you don't fall under any of this, you will get $0. As per condition 2, if you are a non-smoker, you will get $50 reduction. If they join stop smoking class, they will get $25 reduction. But if you are a smoker, then you have to pay additional $75. This is how we have to draw the equivalence classes diagram. For more clarity, you can listen to the explanation again. Now let's see how many test cases are required to test this effectively. Suppose first test case is for smokers. They are not part of pledge. They didn't fill health risk form. And since they didn't participate in any of it, they have to pay additional $75. Now next test case is for smokers who participate in pledge and filled health risk form and join non-smoking class, then they will get $50 off. Now only $25 column is left out. So we just need to write one more test case to cover it. That means with three test cases, we can cover all the conditions. Now we need to find out the maximum and minimum premium possible here. Calculating maximum premium is simple. We know that the premium is $400 
and if you a smoker and didn't participate in any program, you have to pay additional seventy-five dollar. That means four hundred plus seventy-five, which is four hundred seventy-five dollars. So maximum premium one can pay is four hundred and seventy-five. Now let's calculate the minimum possible premium. For that. First, we need to find the ten percent of four hundred, which is forty dollar. Now, here twenty-five is the max reduction, so we'll consider twenty-five for our calculation. Similarly, here fifty dollar is the max value, so we will consider fifty dollars for our calculation. And here again, fifty dollar is the max value. Now you need to add all these values and subtract it from four hundred to get the minimum premium value. So, four hundred minus forty, twenty-five, fifty, and fifty gives two hundred and thirty-five. Maximum premium one can pay is two hundred and thirty-five. The conclusion is we need three test cases. Maximum premium is four hundred seventy-five dollar. And minimum premium is two hundred thirty-five dollars. That means option three is the correct answer. Here, the question is: the switch is switched off once the temperature falls below eighteen, and then it is turned on. When the temperature is more than twenty-one, when the temperature is more than twenty-one, identify the equivalence values which belong to the same class, and these are your options. Now let's first build the equivalence classes diagram. From the question, it's clear that eighteen and twenty-one are the boundary values. Now we will look into all the options to get the correct answer. Remember, we have to find value in the same equivalence class. Option A is twelve, sixteen, and twenty-two. Option B is twenty-four, twenty-seven, and seventeen. Option C is. Twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. Option D is fourteen, fifteen, and twenty-four. If you look into all the option, it's clear that in option C, all the values are in the same equivalence class. That means option C is the answer. Here, the question is: One of the fields on a form contains a text box which accepts alphabets in lower or upper case. Identify the invalid equivalence class value. And these are your options. Now let's first build the equivalence classes diagram. From the question, it's clear that we will have two classes. Alpha numeric class and non-alpha numeric class. Alpha numeric class is a valid, as here lower or upper case of alphabets are accepted. And non-alpha numeric class, where we can keep anything which is not alphabet. Now we will look into all the options to get the correct answer. Remember, we have to find value for invalid equivalence class. Option A is C L A S S, where all the alphabets are in caps. Since they are all alphabets, they are in valid class, and option A is not the answer. Option B is C L A. S S, where C is in small case, and all other alphabets are in caps. 
since they are all alphabets, they are invalid class and option B is not the answer. Option C is C L A S S, where C and L are in caps, and all other alphabets are in small case. But since they are all alphabets, they are in valid class, and option C is not the answer. In option D, C, L are in caps, A, S, S are in small case, and 0, 1 are numeric values. Since 0 and 1 are numeric values, they are in invalid class. Clearly, option D is the answer. Here, the question is, which set of test data demonstrates equivalence partitioning to check whether a customer is a teenager or not? And these are our options. Now, before drawing the equivalence class, we should know definition of teenager. A person aged from 13 to 19 years are teenager, which means 12 is not a teenager, 13 is a teenager, 19 is a teenager, 20 is not a teenager. Now we can draw the equivalence class diagram. With definition, it's clear that 13 and 19 are the boundaries. Now let's analyze each of the options one by one. Option A is 10. 15, and 19. Option B is 13, 19, and 25. Option C is 13, 16, and 19. Option D is 12, 13, and 20. In option A, 10 is in invalid range, whereas 15 and 19 are in valid range. In option B, 13 and 19 are in valid range, and 25 is in invalid range. In option C, 13, 16, and 19 are in valid range. In option D, 12 is in invalid range whereas 13 and 19 is in valid range. It is clear that in option C, all the values are in the same equivalence class. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Here, the question is, a program validates a numeric field as follows. Values less than 10 are rejected. Values between 10 and 21 are accepted. Values greater than or equal to 22 are rejected. Which of the following input values cover all of the equivalence partitions? And these are our options. Now we can draw the equivalence class diagram. As per the question, value less than 10 are rejected. That means less than 10 is one boundary. It is also mentioned that values greater than or equal to 22 are rejected, which means that any value greater than 21 are rejected. So, this is the second boundary. Here, we have three equivalence classes. Now let's analyze each of the options one by one. Option A is 10, 11, and 21. Option B is 3, 20, and 21. Option C is 3. 
ten and twenty two. Option D is ten, twenty one, and two. In option A, ten, eleven, and twenty one are in valid range. In option B, three is invalid, whereas twenty and twenty one are in valid range. In option C, three is invalid. Ten is valid, and twenty-two is in invalid range. In option D, ten and twenty-one are in valid range, whereas twenty-two is in invalid range. It is clear that in option C, all equivalence classes covered. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Here, the question is: Which of the following is a valid collection of equivalence classes for the following problem? An integer field shall contain values from and including one to fifteen, and these are our options. Option A is less than one, one through fifteen, more than fifteen. Option B. Is negative numbers, one through fifteen, above fifteen. Option C is less than one, one through fourteen, more than fifteen. Option D is less than zero, one through fourteen, fifteen, and more. This question is provided to check the equivalence classes concept. Even though the question is simple, many do mistake here. Let's draw the equivalence classes diagram to get the answer. As per the question, an integer field shall contain values from and including one to fifteen, which means value less than one is invalid. And value greater than fifteen is invalid. Therefore, one and fifteen will be lower and upper boundary. As per the diagram, we can say first equivalence class is less than one. Second equivalence class is one through fifteen, and third equivalence class is more than fifteen. That means. Option A is the answer. Here, the question is: Given the following specification, which of the following values for age are in the same equivalence partition? If you are less than eighteen, you are too young to be insured. Between eighteen and thirty inclusive, you will receive a twenty percent discount. Anyone over thirty is not eligible for a discount. And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence classes diagram to get the answer. As per the question value, less than eighteen are not insured. That means. Eighteen is the lower boundary. As per the question, anyone over thirty is not eligible for a discount. That means thirty is the upper threshold. This is how we have to draw the equivalence classes diagram. Option A is seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Option B is twenty-nine. Thirty, thirty-one. Option C is eighteen, twenty-nine, thirty. Option D is seventeen, twenty-nine, thirty-one. As per the question, we have to find which of the following values for age are in the same equivalence partition. In option A. Seventeen is in different class, and eighteen and nineteen are in different class. 
In option B, 29 and 30 are in one class and 31 is in different class. In option C, 18, 29, and 30 are in the same class. In option D, 17, 29, and 31 are in different classes. It is clear from the analysis that option C is the answer, as all the values are in the same class. Here, the question is, if the temperature falls below 18 degrees, the heating is switched on. When the temperature reaches 21 degrees, the heating is switched off. What is the minimum set of test input values to cover all valid equivalence partitions? And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence classes diagram to get the answer. As per the question, if the temperature falls below 18 degrees, the heating is switched on. That means 18 is the lower boundary. As per the question, when the temperature reaches 21 degrees, the heating is switched off. Here, what we need to notice is till 20 the heating is not switched off. At 21, heating is switched off. That means the upper boundary is 20. With this, the equivalence classes diagram is ready. Now let's analyze the options one by one. Option A is 15, 19, and 25. Option B is 17, 18, 20, and 21. Option C is 18, 20, and 22. Option D is 16 and 26. As per the question, we have to cover all valid equivalence partitions. Here, all the three classes are valid equivalence class, because in all the classes we perform some function. In option A, 15, 19, and 25 are in different classes. In option B, 17 is in one class, 18 and 20 are in one class and 21 is in one class. In option C, 18 and 20 are in same class and 22 is in the different class. In option D, 16 and 26 are in different classes. Since we have to cover values from all valid equivalence partitions, option A is the answer. Because here all the three values are in three different class and only with three values, we can achieve it. Here, the question is, a company is going to provide their employees with a bonus which will be based on the employee's length of service in the company. The bonus calculation will be zero if they have been with the company for less than two years. 10% of their salary for more than two, but less than five years, and 25% for five to ten years, 35% for ten years or more. The interface will not allow a negative value to be input, but it will allow a zero to be input. How many equivalence partitions are needed to test the calculation of the bonus? And these are our options. Here, we just have to find out how many equivalence partitions are required. Let's draw the equivalence partitions diagram to find the answer. As per the question, the first condition is, the bonus calculation will be zero if they have been with the company for less than two years. That means two year is one of the boundaries. 
Let's analyze the second condition. 10% of their salary for more than two, but less than five years. That means five year is the second boundary. The third condition is 25% for five to 10 years. That means 10 is the next boundary. And the fourth condition is 35% for 10 years or more. Fifth condition is the interface will not allow a negative value to be input. That means zero is one of the boundaries too. Now the question is, how many equivalence partitions are needed to test the calculation of the bonus? From the diagram, it's clear that we need five equivalence partitions. Therefore, option D is the answer. Here the question is, a system specification states that a particular field should accept alphabetical characters in either uppercase or lowercase. Which of the following test cases is from an invalid equivalence partition? And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence classes diagram to get the answer. As per the question, here we will have two equivalence partition. One for alpha characters, which is valid class, and other for non-alpha character, which is invalid class. Now let's analyze each option one by one. Option A is F E E D S. Option B is F 3 3 D S. Option C is F E E D S. Option D is F E E D S. As per the question, we have to find which of the following test cases is from an invalid equivalence partition. And it is clear that option B is the answer, as 33 is an invalid class. Therefore, option B is the answer. Here, the question is, an automated air conditioner is programmed to turn its heating unit on when the temperature falls below 17 degrees Celsius and to turn its refrigeration unit on when the temperature exceeds 26 degrees Celsius. The air conditioner is designed to operate at temperatures between minus 10 degrees Celsius and plus 40 degrees Celsius. Given the above specification, which of the following sets of values shows that the equivalence partition test design technique has been used correctly? And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence classes diagram to get the answer. As per the question, its heating unit turns on when the temperature falls below 17 degrees, which means that 17 is one of the boundaries. As per the question, refrigeration unit turns on when the temperature exceeds 26 degrees, which means that 26 is one of the boundaries. And again, as per the question, the air conditioner is designed to operate at temperatures between minus 10 degrees Celsius and plus 40 degrees Celsius. That means negative 10 and 40 are two more boundaries. With this, the equivalence classes diagram is ready. Now, we will analyze each of the options one by one. Option A is negative 11, negative 1, 18, 27, 51. Option B is negative 11, negative 1, 12, 18, 27, 51. Option C is negative 11, 
18, 51. Option D is negative 1, 12, 18, 27. As per the question, we have to find which of the following sets of values shows that the equivalence partition test design technique has been used correctly. If we analyze all the options, option A and option B are correct because all the boundaries are covered here. Now we have to select the best answer. And option A is the best answer here because here we are achieving our goal with minimum test cases. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Here the question is, an employee's bonus is to be calculated. It cannot become negative, but it can be calculated to zero. The bonus is based on the duration of the employment. An employee can be employed for less than or equal to two years, more than two years, but less than five years, five to ten years, or longer than ten years. Depending on this period of employment, an employee will get bonus of 0%, 10%, 25%, or 35%. How many equivalence partitions are needed to test the calculation of the bonus? And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence classes diagram to get the answer. As per the question, it cannot become negative, but it can be calculated to zero. That means 0 is one of the boundaries. Next condition is an employee can be employed for less than or equal to 2 years. That means 2 is one of the boundaries. Next condition is more than 2 years, but less than 5 years. With this, we get 5 as one of the boundaries. And next condition is 5 to 10 years, or longer than 10 years. With this, we get 10 as one of the boundaries. And then we have bonus of 0%, 10%, 25%, or 35% respectively. With this, the equivalence partition diagram is ready. And we can see that we have 5 equivalence partition. Therefore, Option B is the answer. Here the question is, if a candidate is given an exam of 40 questions, should get 25 marks to pass, 61%, and should get 80% for distinction, what is equivalence class? And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence classes diagram to get the answer. As per the question, one should get 25 marks to pass, which is 61% of 40. That means 25 is one of the boundaries. Next condition is one should get 80% for distinction. Here we have to find 80% of 40 which is 32. That means 32 is the other boundary. This is how we have to draw the equivalence classes diagram. Now let's analyze each of the options one by one. Option A is 23, 24, 25. Option B is 0, 12, 25. Option C is 30, 36, 39. Option D is 32, 37, 40. In option A, 23 and 24 are in same class, but 25 is in different class. In option B, 0 and 12 are in same class but 25 is in different class. In option C, 30 is in one class, but 36 and 39 are in different class. 
in option D, 32, 37, and 40 are in same class. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Here the question is, postal rates for light letters are 25p up to 10g, 35p up to 50g, plus an extra 10p for each additional 25g up to 100g. Which test inputs, in grams, would be selected using equivalence partitioning? And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence partitioning diagram. As per the question, postal rates for light letters are 25 page up to 10 gram. So here, 10 gram is at the boundary. Next condition is 35 pages up to 50 gram. The next boundary is at 50 gram. Now the next condition is very important. An extra 10 pages for each additional 25 grams up to 100 gram. Here, for the next condition, we have to look into previous condition. Here, we have 35 pages. Do we have to add 10 more pages? With that, we will get 45 pages. And in the 50 gram, we have to add 25 gram. With this, we will get next boundary, which is 75 gram. But the condition will not end here, as we have not yet reached 100 grams. So, we have to repeat the process again. In 45 pages, we have to add 10 pages. With this, we will get 55 pages. And in 75 gram, we have to add 25 gram. With this, we will get next boundary, which is 100 gram. With this, the last condition is fulfilled as we reached 100 gram. Now the equivalence partitioning diagram is complete. Now let's analyze the options one by one. Option A is 8, 42, 82, 102. Option B is 4, 15, 65, 92, 159. Option C is 10, 50, 75, 100. Option D is 5, 20, 40, 60, 80. As per the question, we have to find which test inputs in grams would be selected using equivalence partitioning. You may get confused between option B and C. But here, option B is the correct answer because it covers all the equivalence classes. Option B is the answer. Here the question is, you are testing a scale system that determines shipping rates for a regional web-based auto parts distributor, you want to group your test conditions to minimize the testing. Identify how many equivalence classes are necessary for the following range. Weights are rounded to the nearest pound. And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence partitioning diagram. We will use this table to draw the equivalence classes diagram. As per the table, First boundary is from 1 to 10, second boundary is at 25, and next boundary is at 50. Between 1 to 10, shipping cost is $5. Between 11 to 25, shipping cost is $7.5. Between 26 and 50, shipping cost is $12. And above 51, it's $17. Since lower boundary is at 1, we need one partition for a zero or negative weight. So now if you count, we will get five equivalence classes. Therefore, option C, 5 is the answer.
Here, the question is: A fitness app measures the number of steps that are walked each day and provides feedback to encourage the user to keep fit. The feedback for different numbers of steps should be up to 1,000, catch potato, above 1,000, up to 2,000, lazy bones, above 2,000, up to 4,000, getting there, above 4,000. Up to six thousand, not bad. Above six thousand, way to go. Which of the following sets of test inputs would achieve the best equivalence partition coverage? And these are our options. Let's draw the equivalence classes diagram to get the answer. As per the question, up to one thousand steps is couch potato. Above one thousand. Up to two thousand steps is lazy bones. Above two thousand, up to four thousand steps is getting there. And above six thousand is way to go. With this, the equivalence classes diagram is complete. Now let's analyze each option one by one. Option A is zero, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. Option B is one thousand, two thousand one, four thousand, four thousand one, six thousand. Option C is one hundred twenty-three, two thousand three hundred forty-five, three thousand four hundred fifty-six, four thousand five hundred sixty-seven, five thousand six hundred seventy-eight. Option D is six hundred sixty-six. One thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, two thousand two hundred twenty-two, five thousand five hundred fifty-five, six thousand six hundred sixty-six. Now, as per the question, we have to find which of the following sets of test inputs would achieve the best equivalence partition coverage. In option A, class not bad and way to go is not covered. In option B, class couch potato is not covered. In option C, class lazy bones and way to go is not covered. In option D, all the classes are covered. That means option D is the correct answer. Here, the question is. A video application has the following requirement: the application shall allow playing a video on the following display resolution. Which of the following list of test cases is a result of applying the equivalence partitioning test technique to test this requirement? And these are our options. Option A is verify that the application can play a video on a display of size. Nineteen twenty by ten eighty, one test case. Option B is verify that the application can play a video on display of size six forty by four eighty and nineteen twenty by ten eighty, two test cases. Option C is verify that the application can play a video on each of the display sizes in the requirement. Four test cases. Option D is verify that the application can play a video on any one of the display sizes in the requirement. One test case. It's clear that we just have to find the number of equivalence partitioning in this question. In the question, four different display resolutions is mentioned, so we need minimum four test cases to validate it. Therefore, option C is the answer. Here the question is: In an examination, a candidate has to score a minimum of twenty-four marks in order to clear the exam. The maximum that he can score is forty marks. Identify the valid equivalence values if the student clears the exam. 
Here, we need to concentrate on two points. First, the valid range is 24 to 40. And we need to find the equivalence values from these options. Let's first draw the equivalence class diagram. As per the question, value in the range 24 and 40 is valid. Now let's have a look into the options. The first option is 22, 23, and 26, and we can place them here. In this option, 22 and 23 are in invalid range, and 26 is in valid range. Therefore, this option is not the answer. Now let's move to the next option, which is 21, 39, and 40. And we can place them like this. Here, 21 is in invalid class. 39 and 40 are in valid range. That is why this is also not the answer. Next option is 29, 30, and 31. And we can place them here like this. And we can see that all the numbers are in the valid range. So, this is the correct answer. We can select options C as the answer.